Now we're going to look at a special case of the work energy method. This is called the conservation of energy, and it does not apply if you have external forces or if you have friction, which would be an external force. So if you have a particle that moves under the action of only conservative forces. The principle of work and energy is simplified to T1 plus V1 is equal to T2 plus V2. So notice there's no work from one to two term here. Because in the previous problem, this term here was capturing that friction um, and those external forces. So if you don't have any of those external forces that are just sort of bleeding energy out of your system, then you can say that the dynamic energy before before is equal to your dynamic energy after. So here, remember our T1, our Ts, these are our kinetic energy, and our Vs are the potential energy. Even though this equation looks very similar to what we were doing before, it's conceptually very different because now we're not considering, um, so if you think about gravity, we're no longer considering gravity as the work that's being done, we're considering gravity as potential energy. And we're no longer considering the spring as the amount of work that it does, we're considering a spring as having potential energy. So it's very, very important to define your reference points in these problems. So I'm gonna move up the screen When you're looking at gravitational potential energy, the potential energy of an object only depends on its distance, its height, from some sort of reference point. So let's draw a particle at three different points. And I'm actually gonna set the datum here at this middle point. So for our particle at this top point here, it has a distance positive y from our reference. I'm sorry, I'll just label this as our reference data. So that means that its potential energy would be equal to, at this moment, I'll call this one. So V1 is equal to the mass times gravity times y1, right? That same particle, after it travels down and reaches this reference point, we'll call this point two, it has no height from the reference. So V2 is equal to zero. There's no potential energy. At point three down here, it now has a distance of minus, I'll call it Y3. So now the potential energy of the particle at that point V3 would be equal to negative mg y3. This reference point is completely arbitrary. When you set up your problem, you get to decide where that reference is, but you must do it. If you don't set a reference, then your problem is not going to make any sense because your potential energy depends on a reference point. Now if we look, I'm going to move the screen up. Now if we look at elastic potential energy, now we're looking at that energy stored in a spring. So if I have, I'm going to use the same drawing as before, we have our spring here, and this was our unstretched length.
When your spring is undeformed, there's no energy stored in that spring. So the potential energy here would be equal to zero. If I now extend this spring out to here and call this delta x1, now the potential energy stored in that spring, V1, is equal to 1 half k delta x1 squared. What if our spring was in compression? Sorry, I should have drawn a wall here that the springs are attached to. If our spring is in compression, our block is here. Now our delta x, I'll call it delta x2, it's negative, but, sorry, it's, it's left of the unstretched length, but it's still storing energy. And so your v2 here would actually be 1 half k delta x2, and it's still positive. So it's always positive, whether compression or tension. And that's because it has potential energy, whether it's stretched or compressed, your spring is storing energy.